Welcome to For Love and Music with Tara Joseph as she explores the ever-changing music industry with today's top creatives, artists, and executives. Enjoy these fun and informative conversations with a little bit of love thrown in along the way. Welcome to For Love and Music with me, Tara Joseph. Now, today's guest is without doubt the youngest guest we've ever had onto the show. It's still only 12 years old. She has wowed the world with her incredible soprano voice. So let's welcome to the show, the wonderful Iman Bisha. Iman, hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Thank you for inviting me. Oh, of course, of course. I'm very well, thank you. Let's start at the very beginning. When did you start singing? I started singing, you know, I actually can't remember a time when I was not singing, but around the age of two, I would just, you know, sing whatever I hear on the radio and stuff. And did you just sort of hear something and immediately start singing or you remember sort of taking it away and then start sort of going through the, the piece in your mind? How did it sort of work? I don't exactly remember. I was so young. Uh, it's, it's been a long time. So when you first started singing, what sort of songs did you really like best? When I first started singing, probably like, like uh, you know, I remember hearing Adele on the radio and, you know, nursery like rhyme songs and we had like song books like frosty the snowman and stuff like that but they ran just kind of like uh changed once i got older at seven i started listening to opera and you know it's been different throughout the years and do you come from a, a musical family i would say no my uncle does play piano and he's you know he's quite good at that but no you re recently started learning the ukulele didn't you yeah, I recently started. I've been able to do a lot of really cool stuff with it. I am just about to finish a really cool song, and uh, we're learning Frosty the Snowman for Christmas. Ah, okay. That'll be fun. What, yeah, I can't wait to hear. And, and what, what made you choose the ukulele? How did that happen? Well, because, you know, I actually originally started off with guitar, but, you know, I just became so overwhelmed with, you know, all the, you know, like, sixth frets and you know everything just being so big and heavy so you know i was uh originally supposed to do both of them at the same time but you know we kind of just we went with ukulele but we're gonna slowly get back into guitar after my fingers just get a little stronger yeah because you've got to have quite long nails haven't you to play the the guitar to catch the the strings don't you have to have a long thumbnail i don't know but uh my guitar teacher doesn't and he plays like he plays everything. Let's just say that. You need short nails on the left hand, and you can have long nails, but you know, on the other you hand, you don't have to. Right, right, right. Uh, okay. Because I've seen some guitar players on their, I guess it's their right hand, on their strumming hand, and their thumbnail is like super long, and sometimes it looks sort of a bit unusual. Yeah, because uh, I guess it's used for, you know, like a replacement rather than the pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, mm, like uh, my friend Marcin from ADT, his left nails were super short. And then he had like long nails on his right hand. It was, it was really interesting, you know? Well, I can't, I can't wait to, to hear and see what you're up to with your, well, I've seen you with your ukulele and you're great, but with your soon-to-be you. guitar skills. Let's hope. Let's hope. So you mentioned a little, um, just a couple of sentences ago about AGT. Well, for the listeners out there who don't know, although I'm sure most of the world does know, AGT stands for America's Got Talent. And that's when I originally met you, when you were on the show and you blew everyone away. Tell us a little bit about that experience back in 2019. Wow. It feels like so long ago, you know, just, you know, so it's crazy. That could only be a year ago. It was an amazing learning experience. I met so many cool people. I got to, you know, expand my song range. I made a lot of friends. And just, you know, it was such a great learning experience. And I had, I had so much fun. I had, like, the time of my life on AGT. But, you know, it was also a lot of hard work. A lot of the days where you're just, like, pushing yourself to the limits to, you know, finish a song, learn the rest of the lyrics for something it was a great experience. It was a great learning experience. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a, I'm very happy with it. What was your best part of being on AGT? God, I have so many. Uh, top two. Top two. This is tough. Let's see. Okay. Number one was 
meeting Simon Cowell, you know, like backstage, like he came backstage after I performed and I was uh, crying because I cry after every performance. I mean, that's just a thing I do, not because of sadness, not because of happiness. I just cry. It's like an emotional relief. Meeting him to start a backstage and uh, getting to take a picture with him, not in a white, not in a gray, not in a black t-shirt, but in a red t-shirt. Oh my goodness. The only, yeah, it was, it was really special. That was, that was a really cool, very rare picture, you know? Oh, wow. Wow. Well, I can't wait to see that picture. Will you send me a copy? Sure. I think I actually have it on my Instagram. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I'll scroll yeah. through that then. Did you feel under a lot of pressure whilst you were on the show or you took it all in your stride? Well, at some points you do feel overwhelmed and, you know, very pressured to, you know, just finish something. But, you know, I think it is, you know, it's basically all worth it. So like you'll get through it and you're like, there's no pressure at the end, you know, like very few places. There were like lots of pressure, you could say. Everybody there, like even the other contestants you were friends with. So there's not much pressure, you know, to, you know, I don't exactly know what to say. It's hard to explain exactly. So when you were standing on the stage, which looks like a big stage, and you're just about to sing your song to the masses watching you on TV, how did you feel at those moments? I'm never really nervous. You know, it's hard to say. I'm never really nervous, but I usually get like, I mean, I usually get a little overwhelmed and then I'm like, you know what? It's going to be fine. Whatever happens, happens. You know, I can't change that. I'll just do my best. And there's always this really funny guy backstage. Okay. He was super funny. He, he worked with like the, uh, the crew and, you know, I didn't even know him that well. I didn't even get his name. I just remembered him as backwards hoodie guy. Cause you know, throughout rehearsal, I would wear my hoodie backwards to not like mess up if I had hair done or like that sort of thing. And he'd like, why are you wearing your hoodie backwards? And he'd make a whole big joke out of it. And, you know, before I go on stage, he'd always make me laugh or something. So all the relief would go out and I'd go on stage and I'd see the people. I'd be like, they're here. They're going to have fun. You know, just go on with the show, whatever happens. Yeah, exactly. Not too much nervousness. Well, that's nervousness. good. Well, you were so amazing on the show. You really, really were. Thank you. And I think, you know, I think that people watching on TV and in the audience at the theater were like blown away with the talent that you have. Thank you. So obviously you really enjoy singing. Yes, I do. I, I love singing. When you sing on a sort of daily basis, do you have a routine? Do you go to lessons? Do you sing in the shower? What, what's your singing routine sort of day to day? It varies. I do take lessons, you know, a few times a week with uh, two amazing teachers, um, Maxwell David and uh, Lisa Hugo. And, you know, I sing everywhere. My brothers will just be like, come on, Evie, stop it. We've heard you sing so much, you know, and I love my brothers. And I'll sing in the shower sometimes. I'll just sing in my room. I'll sing in my room and I'll forget my windows are open and I'll see people outside and they'll be like, they'll look <laughs> up their heads and be like, what the hell is that? I'll be like, sorry. It's quite interesting. There's not too much of a schedule. You know, I sing when I sing. You know, my mom will be like, hey, Evie, you want to practice? I'll be like, yeah, sure, mom, let's go. And we'll just, you know, practice for like two hours. Sometimes we'll just like practice for half an hour. Sometimes we'll practice for four hours. And what do you do to look after your voice? Because I know singers often have a quite sort of specific things for themselves that they like to do to protect their instrument, so to speak. What do you do? Well, ever since I first started working with my, uh, one of my singing teachers, Lisa Hugo, she's always been very like prone about like, make sure and I don't hurt my vocal cords because... I'm still little and the, you know, everything's still developing and we've always been like very careful about that to not strain them, to not over sing. You know, if I have a performance, I'll take long breaks, like sometimes a little too long, you know, I'll just get a little lazy there, but you know, I'll take breaks on my vocal cords and I won't over sing. And if, if ever I'm like, yeah, I can't sing today, we won't sing. We just got to, you know, always sing from our diaphragm or my voice will not sound good. Always that sing be, from your diaphragm. Bad. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you mentioned, you know, when you were really little and you started off singing that, you know, you'd listen to the radio and start singing along to different songs. Who are you listening to now on the radio or who are you just listening? Well, not on the radio. People stream things these days. God, I sound so old fashioned. Who, who are you listening to these days? Uh, let's see. Who am I listening to? You know what? These days I'm, I'm kind of mixing it up. I'm listening to, you know, Lana Del Rey, 
I, I obviously listen to Maria Callas. That's kind of obvious. I love her. I listen to some Paul Potts once in a while. And, you know, we're learning about, you know, different, like, classical musicians and, you know, musicians in um, general. Is it a classical I, person? I he wrote, he, uh, he uh, orchestrated Claire de Lune. Just, I just had it in my head. It was just there. And just not, are you still, Give me one. are you still a BTS fan? Yes, I, I, I'm a fan. I wouldn't consider myself an army because they've just become so big. It's hard to catch up. You know, there's like so many things you got to be on at like 3 a.m. in the morning. Like I knew this one girl, she's like, she's, she pulls all nighters like so much just to be able to, you know, listen to them or, you know, see them. And I, I'm like, I, I kind of ain't got time. You know, I want, I want my sleep <laughs> sort of thing. But, you know, I do listen to them. I do listen to them. I hope to be able to listen to them more. Maybe when it gets a little easier to listen to them. Yeah. And, you know, a little easier to be an army. Because, like... What does that mean? Does that mean just like a, a sort of hardcore fan if you're in the BTS yeah, like, at army? Like a fanatic. Like, you, like... There, there's just one person I met, and they're like, she knows their blood types. Oh, my goodness. I was like, mind blown. She's like, I'm like, yeah, I'm not army. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm like... Maybe I would have considered myself army a few like months ago before I met this person, but like after I'm like, yeah, that that's just crazy. And she'll be like, yeah, I'll, sometimes I'll stay up like to like four, maybe six a.m. watching their V lives, and I'll be like, what the hell? I mean, I love them. I love their music. I just couldn't do that. Okay, I'm sorry, BTS. I, I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't blame you. I don't think I could stay up all night to, you know, just sort of. I couldn't. It's too much. They just, they just stream their music so much, and like they know every word to every song, and you know, some of them even learn Korean just to like understand even more. It's crazy, you know. But you can know. you speak any Korean? I'm not gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you you know a couple or so words. I don't even know any. Let's see. Um, I actually do know. I mean, oh, come on, all the Korean drama they watch, they got nothing from this, only subtitles? Come on. <laughs> Actually, uh, I, I, I know this word. Um, it's like... What does it mean? I don't know what it means. <laughs> well, you can tell me later. Okay. Remember it. Let's see, let's see. Uh, wait, I think I got it. Um, like, like, thank you. Uh, it's like, uh, I'm not, I, I, can hear, I can hear myself saying it in my head. But like when I'm like mouthing it, I'm like, whoa, that does not sound right. It's like, uh, <laughs> will you, will you, I mean, that was something like, will you call me back <laughs> afterwards and let me know what it is? Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. call me back afterwards. I, I just don't want to embarrass myself, you know? Just... <laughs> Tell me back to call me back afterwards and you can whisper it to me after, okay? Okay. Okay, you just promise you, promise you can't make fun of me? I will, I swear. <laughs> I promise, promise I won't make fun of you. I'll just be super impressed. I'll just be super impressed. Okay. But you can tell me later. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay, good. So listen, so when you're not singing, what do you like to do? Oh, the stuff I do. <laughs> oh my goodness, there seems to be a lot. I mean, oh, there's well, got to be a lot, you know? You can't live life without doing a lot of stuff. Let's see. Well, I do lots of sports. I mean, I have tennis, boxing, football, swimming, wow. basketball. I play with my friends. I run a lot. I do like ballet work out i don't know stuff like that and then sometimes me and my brother since i have a hammock in my room now instead of a bed we play like games on my hammock it's, it's so fun you know we made up a game today what was that because i have these well first of all i'm still waiting for pillow covers for like a month now from amazon they're like unfortunately we cannot find your pillow covers so we just have these massive pillows in my room they're like the extra 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 large size pillows and so we made a game where we had to like uh, kick the pillows, and every time we kick the pillows, you're not allowed to use your hands. So every time we just like bash our heads into pillows, be like, boing. <laughs> it would be really funny. So I do that. I make bracelets with my friend. We do a little thing here. I can make rings, like I, you know, like where you bend the wire and you yeah. make those beautiful rings with like the beads and stuff. I make those now, and you know, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to get better at it. I might not be the best, but I, being good takes time. I've learned that. I bake. Well, I was going to ask you about your baking because I've seen different photos of cookies and cakes that you've made. Yeah, my poor dad, he's like, he's trying to, you know, like get healthier, you know, gain some muscle, you know, lose weight sort of thing. And I was baking a lot in the beginning. 
like when I first started baking a lot, I was baking like every single day. It was crazy. I mean, it was so much baking. What's your speciality? Yes. Brownies. Oh. Yeah. And he's like, Evie, for God's sake, stop baking. He's like, stop it. All I do is I wake up and I eat your things. And then I go back to bed. I'm like, why did I just eat that? I'm on a diet, <laughs> you know? And then he'll have to run like an extra 10K the next like day. And I'll feel really bad. I'll be like, why did I bake? Now I feel bad. Do your brothers eat all your baking as well? Yeah. But, you know, they don't eat it as much as my one friend. Okay. So we're like, he, he, we're best friends with his family. He's a little younger than me. He's like, he's like my brother. And so is his brothers. They're like my brothers. Except for his older brother. He's kind of annoying. Even though he's older than me. Sorry, Abdullahi. Well, I always take my baking over to their house because they have, um, they're a big family. So I'll take my baking and they'll give me critiques. They'll be like, maybe some more of this, this, and this. Like maybe some more chocolate here. You know, they'll give me critiques and stuff. And, uh, and you know, that's the best way, you know, it's for me to be able to bake and not have to like cut the recipe into like fourths and, you know, you know, get critiquing. So I take it over to their house and it's devoured. Really? it's gone especially my brownies one time i took them over i go into the other room to like probably like you know put something away or something i come back and there's no more brownies i'm like i want to try them you know sometimes if i make like my mom's favorites like let's see i mean she's everybody likes brownies if i make her you know anything to do with like chocolatey you know or nuts i'll wake up the next morning they won't be there <laughs> <laughs> all gone devoured yeah yeah you know it depends, because some things they won't eat at all. Like, some things I'll make, like, experiment things, and they'll be like, yeah, now nah, I'm good. See you later. Do you do, like, vegetarian stuff or vegan stuff or just full-fat milk all the way and full-fat cream all the way? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> it's like American-style baking extra butter. Oh, extra. Well, that's what I like. <laughs> that's what I like. Honestly, seriously, I would be devouring everything before they even got out the oven if I was with you. Let's hope. What is your favorite uh, dessert? I've got a very sweet tooth. So actually, last week, there's in Santa Monica, which isn't too far from me, there's a British store. And I really love Ooh. British chocolate. So I went to the British store and I stocked up on all of this British chocolate. Things that you won't have heard of, like double deckers and arrows and flakes and ripples. I love chocolate. But, I've heard of flakes. Oh, you have? I think. Okay, good. Are they like very flaky? They make a big mess. They always come exactly. Like, basically exactly. Crushed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love all of that stuff. But I love um, my brother-in-law is a baker. I mean, not professionally, Ooh. but he likes baking. So he'll yeah, neither mind. <laughs> so he'll drop round chocolate chip cookies and banana Ooh. bread. That's so good. One. Yeah, banana bread with walnuts. Yeah. That's good. That's what my mom likes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so he, so he spoils us with the cookies and the banana bread. Yeah, it must be nice. Yeah, I'll make banana bread. I think actually, my mom likes banana. My mom, and my little brother, love likes banana bread so much. I'm not even allowed to bring it over to my friend's house. <gasps> really? They have never tried it because <laughs> the recipe. I'm, you know, it's like four bananas, this much, this. But the bananas always become really small when I mush them. So the recipe always comes up being really small. And they're like, yeah, you're not bringing it over. It's for us. <laughs> because it's, it's on the more healthier side than all of my stuff. So they won't feel as guilty eating it. But, you know, about like the healthy, you know, um, baking and stuff. Yeah, I do do that sometimes. Especially for me. Because, you know, I don't exactly like, like the taste of it. You know, it makes me feel a little like sick. Because I'm allergic to a lot of things when I have like, you know, lots of butter, you know, lots of sugar, you know, lots of flour. Because, I don't know, it just makes me feel sick like sick like because like i'm allergic to flour the milk and the butter that's unfortunate but i still do eat i, I mean i still eat butter i still eat a lot of butter let's just say that me and my friend we, we kind of like experimenting with healthier stuff so you can eat more of it oh sounds good i like this i'm gonna have to come over very soon and you're gonna have to cook for me yeah now now tell me yeah, you, yeah. you mentioned your you mentioned your brothers a couple of times so you're in the middle aren't you? you've got an elder brother and a younger brother I'm actually, I'm actually a mother too. I'm a mother to my brother <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Your little brother? Mm -hmm. Not my, I mean, my older brother, not so much. I mean, he, he goes to school. We don't. So me and my, me and my little brother are always, you know, we always got each other's back and, you know, so does my older brother. And, you know, they're just, they're so supportive. So you're homeschooled is what you mean. I'm homeschooled. My little brother's homeschooled. My other brother goes to school because, you know, my mom's like, okay, you're going into high school. It's getting tough. I can't do this. 
it's like x times v times a equals i'm like what are you even what is he even learning at this point like letters <laughs> So what I've seen on Instagram a couple of times is you doing duets with your younger brother and they're so adorable and he's got a lovely voice too. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. My little brother during those duets is so funny. I'll give him little signals of like when to start and stuff because, you know, he's little and he sometimes gets confused and it, it's, uh, you know, they take us a long time though. That's why there's only like two of them, I think. Uh, they'll take us like months because we'll get really lazy and he'll just be like, no, I'm tired. I don't really want to do it. I'll be like, okay, sure. Okay. Back, I'll back off. And you know, my brothers are so supportive through everything. And, uh, well, that's lovely because, you know, obviously, you know, you've traveled the world. You've, you know, we actually, you, me and your mom, we were in, um, Berlin this time last year, I think. Yeah. And we had a great trip and you were singing on a, big TV in Germany, in Berlin. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, it was awesome. And I mean, you have traveled a lot. Mm -hmm. So it must, I mean, obviously this year is slightly different because we've all been in sort of lockdown with coronavirus, you know, situations. But um, have you traveled to a particular country that you can't wait to go back to and wait to sing in again? Or is there somewhere you haven't been yet that you're really looking forward to going to? Well, my favorite place, I mean, favorite country, favorite place I've ever been is Sri Lanka. Uh, I went backpacking with my family there for a month. Wow, how lovely. And yeah, how it, was, exciting. it was such a great experience. You know, it was such a great break because I think we didn't do any singing, you know, no performances. And, you know, you got to just like, like a straight up shot of how like beautiful, like some parts of the world are and, you know, how nice these people are. And, you know, they're so, they're like the nicest people I've ever met. To this day, if I meet like someone from Sri Lanka, they're so nice. There's this one girl in my ballet, she's from Sri Lanka. Before I even knew her, I'm like, yeah, she's the nicest person in this class. And uh, that was so long ago. But, you know, I would love to go back and, you know, maybe one day perform there. You know, someone, someone invite me. I'd love to perform there. That'd be fun. <laughs> That'd be really good cool. <laughs> just to go back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the beaches. Wow. <laughs> My mom would get kind of mad at us. We'd go out a little too far and she'd be like, I swear you be, you, know, you go out that far again and then, you know, we'll get the waves back in. But the weirdest thing is the waves are not normal. They're really weird. They're like, imagine two waves. Like there's a wave coming in from the shore and there's a wave coming from the um, ocean or sea. Uh, yeah, Indian Ocean or Indian. Yeah. And they collide together and then make this big splash. And I remember being in the middle of one with my little uh, boogie board and you go up into the air. She's like, wow. it shoots you up like a volcano. And they're so fun. But it is kind of hard to get into the middle of one because they're, you know, sometimes they'll be bigger than others and they, you won't even feel them. And you gotta, they're, they kind of show up and move like to, towards the show, shore, but, you know, you got to be exact. Kind of like getting shot up. But, you know, You're that was a really cool experience. You're quite an adventure, aren't you? I love your sportiness and... You know, you're swimming in the dangerous waves. It's like, oh my goodness. Yeah, my brother always had my back during that. He'd be like, he, he, yeah. would, he, he would, he would, sounds a bit me. hairy. What? Sounds a bit hairy, a bit like dodgy doing that. Oh, uh, yeah. But you know, it was all worth it. It was really fun. And the water was, yeah, it sounds it. It was beautiful. Oh, and also, my brother is really daring. I was too scared, but you know, I still regret not doing it to this day. He went like, rock climbing down a waterfall and then we also got to jump off waterfalls and like we had this really cool like guide and he's like yeah i would walk all the way up this mountain just to go to school because the school's at the top of the hill sort of thing but me and like the rest of my family were like oh, the... <laughs> and we we're like dying and he's like walking he's like barefoot he's just walking like it's like you know walk in the park and you know it's so interesting to see you know the different lifestyles of so many people and we also went to a really cool tea plantation. It smelled like tea. I was like, now I'm thirsty for tea. <laughs> <laughs> and you know. I've always wanted to go to Sri Lanka. I hope that it's somewhere that I'm able to go backpacking in one day. Yeah. But actually talking of meeting lots of different people, recently be you became youth ambassador for the incredible charity Feed the Children. Yeah. How do you enjoy that experience? And why did you say yes? I was very lucky to be able to, you know, partner with them and become their youth ambassador. And I was very happy for that. 
And, you know, food is such a big part of my life. I mean, I love baking. I love food. I love trying different food. And, you know, so many children around the world and in the U.S., you know, they don't have, you know, a guaranteed meal every day. And, you know, it just makes me really sad to think, think of that. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do whatever I can to help. And, you know, partnering with them was a great way to do that. And, you know, we hope to make progress. Oh, well, I think that's really special that you, you know, have got involved with such a great, great charity. Thank you. So just going back to your music for a minute and your singing, do you hope that as you get older and you become a teenager and then, you know, an adult, that you continue singing and that singing is your career as, you know, as a grown up? Is that what you would like? Yes. I want to spend my whole life singing, whether it's singing for a massive audience or if it's just singing for myself or friends, you know, just, you know, to keep singing and, you know, maybe something will happen and, you know, you never know. So, you know, I'm just going to, you know, go with the flow for now, figure it out in the future. And then I'll be like, well, you're so incredibly talented. You really are. Thank you. And you've got such a beautiful, beautiful voice and such stage presence. Thank you. I think often performers don't have the whole package. Like you can be a great singer, but you might not have the personality or you might have a personality, but not the great vocal capability, but you've got it all. So I'm very excited to see what the future holds for you. And just, just maybe as our last question, or oh, actually I've got two more questions for you. What advice would you give to other children who would like to follow in your footsteps? who think that they, you know, who, who love singing and have a voice and would like to, you know, use it, what advice would you give? Well, you got to be ready to work really hard. Sometimes, you know, there'll be people who are just really supportive and they love, you know, they love what you're doing. They love the way you sound. They love your music. And there'll be, uh, you know, some people who just, you know, will reject it. They won't like it. You gotta just, you know, keep going. Just work really hard to it. It's gonna be really tough. It's gonna be hard. You're gonna wanna stop at some points, but you know, once you get on stage or into a studio and you start doing what you love, you know, it's all worth it. Enjoy every moment of it. I think that's great advice. And I think enjoying every moment of it and working very hard, I think those are two key, really important points. So just to finish off with, if you could duet with anyone in the world, who would you want to duet with? Anyone? Mm -hmm. Tough question. Or it could be a couple of people. Probably. If Maria Callas was alive, her, but she's not. So that's not really, that's not really possible. But, but that's, that's a good answer though. But Paul Potts. I think oh, he, okay. I, I think he's just so, he's so cool and his voice is so, you know, velvety smooth. And he's, he's quite interesting because if you look at his social media, it's, it's very calm. And he's extremely famous, and yet he's not, he doesn't act like that. He's, he's down so Down to normal. earth. Yeah, down very to down earth. to earth. And it's, he's very cool. Like, his pictures on Instagram, most of them will be, like, pictures of, like, really cool places, like an opera house or, you know, some scenery. And you'll see, you'll see very few pictures of him. And I think it's very cool how he's, you know, he's just like, I'm going to use this account, you know, for the people who follow me. And I'm going to use it to show all the very cool places he's been. And I think I would do a duet with him. That would be, that would be amazing. I would love that. Well, he, he is, again, incredibly talented and seems like such a nice guy, doesn't he? Yeah, he does seem really nice. Really, he seems like, really nice and so successful. Yes, he's been very successful. But as I was saying, you know, he's very successful, but he's so down to earth. Which, you know, what I've seen, you know, from, you know, social media and, you know, what I've heard is that, People just get over their heads with this, you know, whole fame thing. And I think it's, you know, very cool how, how he's been able to, you know, control that and, you know, just, you know, be like, you know what, famous or not, I'm going to be me sort of thing. I love that. Well, listen, Iman, it's been so lovely to have you on to For Love and Music. Thank you. I'm so happy that, you know, you, you said yes to coming on. I'm literally one of your number one fans, as you know. And Aww. really, really excited about what the future holds. So um, I wish you a very happy holidays. Thank you. You know, and we will be chatting again very soon. So thank you again. And thank you. Hopefully. Definitely.
Definitely. And thank you to all of our fabulous For Love and Music listeners. And for now, stay safe and healthy. And you'll be hearing from me again very soon. Bye. Thank you for listening to For Love and Music with Tara Joseph. For more information, you can check out at For Love and Music Official on Instagram, at For Love and Music Official on Facebook, and also visit www.jamartistgroup.com forward slash podcast.